So we've made a super early start this morning to come and see Phil at Ellis Ashton because his detailer and valeter Craig's come to do a bit of a paint correction job on our DB9. Now the DB9's 2007 so it's, it's getting on a little bit in age and I've probably not looked after it the best I could so Craig's going to show us how you can look after your paintwork in the proper manner. So Craig's getting all set up to start the first part of the process, which I think is the wash. So let's go and catch up with him and see what the plan is. First step is going to be I'm going to do an outside wash outside the building. Then I'm going to drag it inside to, to do the polishing stage. But before we can do the polishing stage, we need to remove any contaminants that are on the car. What we'll do is we're going to start with the wheels, give them a nice sort of deep clean and the under arches. So I'll do this now. This will take about 10 to 15 seconds to start reacting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to soak the tyres and the under arches with a cleaner and then I'm going to use another wheel cleaner which is less aggressive. So even though it's pretty clean you can see at the back of the alloys there it holds quite a lot of dirt. This alloy here, we've got a slight bit of damage and that's taken away a bit of the lacquer. And if I was to put anything overly strong on this, like an acid cleaner, that could start eating away at the alloy underneath the, the lacquer and bubble out the lacquer even worse. So I need to take that into account when I'm, when I'm cleaning this wheel. And I don't want to leave any products dwelling on a wheel for, for too long of a period. Would, would you have any advice for people Obviously not looking for a professional valet, but at home, would, would you cringe if you just one bucket? I see you've got like three buckets, there's a reason for that or? There is no scientific reason why you should do it. It's a lot of it's about common sense. So if, you were, if you're limited to what you have at home, you don't, and you've only got the one bucket, for example, you, you think about what could cause the most damage to the car. If you started with the wheels and a sponge and started using a sponge in the same bucket on your wheels and then went automatically straight to the paintwork, the chances of you damaging that car are quite high. But if you, for example, if you used to use common sense and use two separate sponges, once you clean the wheel, you take the bucket away, give it a thorough rinse out, get rid of anything that could be floating around in the bucket, come back with a fresh, I, I don't like using sponges, but whatever you've got available, that's the most common sense approach. But my advice would be speak to somebody who's in the trade, speak to somebody who's in the industry. Wheels are done now, so what we're going to move on to now is called the pre-wash stage. And I use a two-step method. So what I'll use is a citrus cleaner, which is designed to loosen any bird poo, anything like that, anything that's dried onto the paintwork. It emulsifies anything that's on it, and that'll lift it away to make the cleaning stage slightly easier. Then what I do is I go over the top of that with a snow foam, out of a snow foam lance. Again, I do, it's pretty much similar to the, the citrus pre-wash, but what it does is the snow foam will run away from the car and anything that's been loosened and emulsified will fall away from the car naturally. So when we rinse the snow foam off, we're removing a high amount of contaminants away from the car before we physically touch it. So this is a car I've had in from start, so this has been a full project for me. So the owner asked me to correct the paintwork and then protect it with ceramic coat. So the difference between a car that we're doing now, which is not protected, to this one. So this car is not clean, it's, it's due a clean, it's coming up for a clean. But what we're going to show is the difference between a protected paintwork and non-protected paintwork. So most water is quite hard, it's got chemicals in it, especially rainwater. So the longer it sits on the car, it could potentially do damage or it could potentially make the cleaning stage a lot harder. But with ceramic coats, the water will sit on top of the, the, the protection and it'll collect into beads. And as you can see, it'll just fall away from the car pretty easily. But if we take it back to the car that we're dealing with at the moment, it's got little to no protection on. It just sits on top of the car for a lot longer. Doesn't collect into beads takes a while to drip off. So now we've done the pre-wash stage and we've removed all the pre-wash from the car. This is the first time I'll physically touch the paintwork. So we're going to go on to the contact phase now. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a two bucket method. 
So it's a separate two buckets to the first bucket I used. We use one bucket which has got clean water and solution in, and we use a second bucket to rinse the mitts out. So the idea of this is once we've made contact with the car, we're essentially bringing dirt away from it. So when we do get any contaminants coming off the car, once it goes into the water, the idea of the grip guard is to trap any of the dirt underneath it. So as you can see, this one is called a vortex grip guard. It's full of holes. The dirt will basically sink to the bottom of the, the bucket and this guard will prevent it coming back into circulation when you reuse the mitt on the next panel of the car. If you start washing in circular motions, you're going to add to that swirl effect that might already be on the car. So we wash in straight lines. And again, we wash from the top of the vehicle down to the bottom. Then what we do is we rinse the mitt away from the buckets. So again, you're trying to remove as much dirty water from the process as possible. So all I'm doing here is getting a, anything that I couldn't, anything that was too tight for to get in with a mitt. So I'm using a soft bristle brush and some all-purpose cleaner just to get any dirt and grime that I couldn't get at when we were doing the, the mitten stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a chemical decontamination to start with. Look at doing two levels of the chemical decontamination. I'm going to do an iron fallout remover which are pretty similar to the wheels. It's going to react with the iron and the paintwork. It's going to lift it away, make it easy to jet wash off. And we'll agitate that with a fresh microfiber cloth. So we spray it on, let it work, use a microfiber cloth just to agitate slightly, rinse it off. Then we're going to move on to a tar and glue remover. So this is anything that's heavier, that's sitting on top of the paintwork. So road tar is a big one. Um, and on a black car, you might not be able to see it, so we're going to be looking for that closely. Spray this on, let it react. It'll dissolve the tar that's that sat on the paintwork, and again, we can rinse that off after some slight agitation. If after the chemical stage we haven't removed it, enough contaminants or we're not satisfied in it, we can move on to what's called the clay bar or the clay pattern stage. Now, everybody's sort of aware of what a clay bar is. It's, it's donkey's years old, it's been around for a while. Quite pliable clay that you can use to contact with the car, and it will lift contaminants away from the paintwork. It's quite harsh, so unless you were polishing a car, I'd, I'd try and stay clear of that. We do have what's called a clay pad down. So this has got like a foam backing. And again, this, this part of the pad is clay. We can get that in a couple of different, different stages, but it's less abrasive than the clay bar. And because it's got a sponge, there's less direct pressure going onto it. So now that the decontamination stage is done, like I said to you before, them chemicals are quite harsh. So what I need to do again, I need to re-foam the car. So we've been here for just over two hours and Craig's thoroughly cleaned the car and he's used all sorts of different chemicals. And I've been blown away by the amount of work that's involved in this process. It really is quite thorough. The next stage of the process is to take the car inside and give it a polish. We consider the car to be clean now, so what we need to do is dry it before we take it inside and inspect it before we start polishing. So what I use to dry is not the old school chamois leather like you'll see in most local car washes, but I use a dual sided twisted drying towel. So the microfibers have got a twisted microfiber on it that absorbs the water, actually draws it away from the surface of the car. So ideally you want to let the, the microfiber do the most amount of work as possible. You don't want to have to buff the car by hand because again the more contact you make with the car the more chance you've got of damaging the paintwork. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a quick detailer by Auto Fresh and that's going to act as a drying aid and it's going to help prevent any smearing or any watermarks of the car as we're, as we're drying it. We're going to use some high lumen torches to check the paintwork and see what condition the paintwork's in. And then we're going to jump on with the machine polishing. We can do this outside, you can use sunlight, it's the most natural light you can use. And you can get an idea for what um, issues you've got with the paintwork. But if you have the opportunity to bring it inside and use a, a high lumen torch, it's probably the best way to find out 
what issues you've got with the paintwork. So I've had a walk around the car and as you can see it looks okay. But if we take a little clo close up to the paintwork, we can actually see swirls in the paint scheme, which we want to try and buff out before we put any sort of protection on. So it looks like a spider web effect, and this is caused by poor wash techniques over a number of months, years. What I'm going to do on the bonnet is I'm going to do a test patch. So what I've done is I've used a low tack tape and I've basically just put a straight line across the bonnet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish this section here with a compound and a pad. I'm going to remove the tape and then do a comparison between what I've polished and what's, what, what I've not polished. And if, and if we're happy with what, what we've done on this section, we continue with that pad and that polish for the rest of the car. There may be situations on the car where we've got a slightly heavier scratch or a, a set of slightly heavier swirls and we might have to switch the compound and pad out again. But usually we can continue with the same same combination for the rest of the car. We're doing a one-step correction today. So we're looking at something that has the ability to cut and polish at the same time. So we don't want to use a pad that's too dense, which has got too much cutting power, but we also don't want to use a pad that's too soft and it won't give us any, any cutting power whatsoever. So with a dual action polisher, there's no direct heat going, unlike a rotary which spins on one axis. You can put a lot of heat into the, the paintwork by it always spinning in the same spot. Whereas if you hold a dual action polish uh, in the same position, because of the, the type of movement, it won't generate heat in the one position. So it's less likely to burn through the paintwork. You need to work the polish into the paintwork. You need to let the compound break down and do its work. So you do a small section at a time, a couple of passes, you wipe it clean, and then you have a look at what you're working with. Now when we've done the wash process, we are washing in straight lines. Uh, that's obviously not to create swirl marks. With polishing, it's slightly different. You want to work in small, light circular motions because we're trying to lift anything off the surface nice and light. So it's slightly different to the wash method. So at this stage now, this is where obviously I would the torch back out uh, and have a look of how much effect that, that pass has had. It's a long drawn out process now where I'm happy with the compound and the, and the pads I've chose. And I'll just be going small section by small section. I've got a smaller polisher over there with a smaller pad head. Same pad, we can use the same compounds to get into the parts where this pad is too big to access. I've been quite surprised how, how much is involved in it. It's, it's, it's a big process, isn't it? It's not yeah. a case of just cleaning the car. It's... No, and I think that's a, a lot of the problem. A lot of people will go on YouTube or they'll, they'll, they'll walk around Halfords and read the backs of packs because they want to polish their own car. And you can pick up a machine polisher for £30 and think you're going to achieve some good results. But if you don't put the prep work in, if you don't put the leg work in and test what's right for the car and what, what the best combinations are for the car, you can actually make the situation worse and then have to phone somebody professional to come out and correct that. No, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't feel confident to do anything that I've seen you do today. Yeah. I mean, I, but I think it's, it's also, it's just, it shows how valuable the work that you do. I mean, I don't know whether this is coming across that well on camera, but it's night and day in, in, in real life, isn't it? I mean, the, the test patch went across there. We can really see the, the difference that it's, uh, that it's made. The only other thing we do that's slightly different now is we've got this solution, which is called an IPA mix. It's a isol isopropyl alcohol mix. So what this is designed to do is we spray it on the bonnet once we've finished polishing and it breaks down any lasting compounds or old, old waxes or old sealants that may be lingering on the car. But to get rid of any of the polish that we might have missed on the, on the buffing stage, this will break it down to a nice crisp finish. So we're about a third away through the polishing and as you can see the bonnet's been done. A few years ago somebody at a wedding ran a Thomson Tank engine toy over the bonnet and scratched it and it's a little child so there's not much we could do about it. So this has been repainted and uh, interestingly Craig you've just been saying that um, you can tell that the bonnet's been, been resprayed when, you, when, you, when you're doing the, the polishing. Yeah so depending on who's done the, the paintwork obviously through experience you can see visually. So on the, the, the bonnet what we noticed before was we had like an orange peely effect. 
um, which, which is an obvious sign that the, the, the bonnet's been resprayed. And obviously, working with yourself, you, you told me first hand that the, the bonnet had been resprayed. So what we, what we need to be mindful of is when we're doing the bonnet to the rest of the car is how the paint reacts. So to get the clear coat thickness exactly the same as the rest of the car, it's nigh impossible on a respray. So when we do our test pass on a, on a bonnet and we're happy and we continue, we have to redo a test pass when we do the rest of the car, just in case the, the, the pads and compounds react different to what's already happened on the bonnet. Now, it's cut quite easy and refined quite easy on the bonnet. Um, we did have a little bit of paint residue come off onto the pads, which is another telltale sign that's been resprayed. So extra precautions been taken on the bonnet as to not going overboard with the, the, the cutting process. But I'm quite happy to continue with the combo that we set up on the bonnet. We seem to be getting very, very similar results. But it's always worth that double check just in case it doesn't and you end up going back over and doing the same work twice. Six and a half hours into the process now, and when we say detail, you can see why, because it is so detailed. So we've got the bonnet, this flank, the roof, and Craig's just on the, you finished the back now? The back, yeah, the back end of the car's finished now. We're just final finishing touches around the badges and stuff that, a little bit awkward, but yeah, about two thirds of the way through the car in total. So we, we finished polishing the car completely now. So the, our next step is to apply a coating to the car. Before we do that, we want to make sure the paint works back to clean again. So when we, because we've used a lot of compound and we, we have a lot of dust in the air flying around, all I'm doing now is just going over with a, a light spray and a, and, a, and a light cloth and a light wipe down just to make sure there's no fingerprints left there, no compound that's not been broken down. Because if we coat over that, it's going to stay there until the coating's diminished. So give it a wipe down, get rid of anything that might be lingering, and then we're ready for the coating. So we're seven and a half hours into the to the process now, and you've you've literally not stopped. It's been I haven't. No, I've I've, I've stopped for the sandwich, and that's about it. For Ten minutes, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the amount of work that's gone into it's just it's it's blown me away completely. When when I spoke to you before we were filming, it used to take about ten hours. Yeah. Like, Ten hours to clean a car. And to be to be fair, we've made we made up some good time with with how lucky we got with the compound and and the polish selection. It sort of sped things up. So and we keep stopping every ten minutes to yeah, do these yeah, things yeah. as well. So it's uh, but it, it looks. I don't know whether it comes across as well as it looks in real life on camera, but it just looks. It looks like a brand new car. It, re it really really does. That's the aim. <laughs> It's incredible. I, I don't know how you've done it. Well, I do because I've watched you for the entire day, but it's, 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 it's proper. And then now that the, the, it's on to the next step or the final step. This, yeah, so, uh, so we've discussed what, what you want from the car. So each customer is different, but what we've decided to go for on this car is we're going to put a ceramic coat on. So that's the, the final layer of protection before the car is out of my control then. The ceramic coat is a really tough layer of hard coat that goes on top of the current clear coat and it can last up to five years if it's maintained properly. It helps the vehicle to be cleaned a lot easier. It will prevent light swirl marks, it will prevent very light scratching and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a really excellent form of protection to, to add on a car at the end of a, a full day's detail. It's had a one-stage correction polish and it's, it had a five-year ceramic coat applied to it. Now it's down to you as the owner to maintain the, the, the ceramic coat. It'll last, it will last the five years if the car is looked after properly, if it's regularly washed and regularly maintained. But it will keep hold of the gloss and the clarity for a lot longer than a normal standard wash would and a normal wax would. R restored some uh, gloss and clarity back to the paintwork and it's as, as close as we can get it to looking brand new as possible.